Hey everybody, I'm Brian and you're watching Disney Brat Photographer, your eyes and ears for all things Disney World and more, often from my perspective as a full-time portrait, headshot, and personal branding photographer. It's a rainy, kind of gloomy day here in Florida. It's early January and we have a special treat today. We're actually going to visit two locations. We're here at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and while we're here tonight, we're going to actually come back and we're going to do the Hoop-to-Do review and we'll share some of our experiences from that with you as well. Before we get going, please consider subscribing below. And if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, be sure to hit the notification button. And finally, at the end of this video, if you liked it, please give us a huge thumbs up as it helps us a great deal. Also, if there's anything special you'd like to see in future videos, let me know in the comments section below. That being said, come on everybody, here we go. Okay, right now we are over here by the bus depot near the kennel and by the trail rides area. You could take the bus and the bus will take you all the way back here to the settlement, which is where we're heading today. But actually I'm gonna do a walk and I'm gonna walk us back here so you can see some of the campsites and some of the areas heading back towards the settlement. Settlement's one of my favorite areas to go out here by the Tri-Circle D Farm. If you've got kids that love horses, it's a fantastic area. And if you're a fitness enthusiast, this is actually one of my favorite resorts to visit because there's lots of areas for running, walking, and if you get lost, it's not a bad thing because it's easy to find your way back to buses that can get you back to back to your room, your cabin, or your, your campsite. Another nice thing is if also if you're a fitness enthusiast, you can actually take over here, there's a trail that will take you all the way over to the Wilderness Lodge that a lot of people don't know about. And it's a nice course to run through the woods out here. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we're gonna start here and we're gonna go down the trail. One of the really nice things about Fort Wilderness is the amenities and all the recreational activities they have out here and one of those is the tricycle d ranch trail rides you can actually do horseback riding it'll take you around fort wilderness it looks like over here you have to be at least 48 inches to do the rides with the horses right here if you look at the sign right there but they have lots of horses out here and this is how most of the people get around disney's fort wilderness resort a lot of people rent these golf carts because it's a big property it's 750 acres so it's helpful to have one of these to get around definitely some of the most secure trash and recycling bins on Disney property but I guess you have to do that because there are lots of animals around there's woods everywhere so you'll see lots and lots of big deer you see lots of turkey other animals I don't think I've seen anything else other than that there's the bus I was talking about going from the bus depot up towards the front, back towards the settlement and all the different areas to drop off guests at their campsites, cabins and all that. You can kind of see through the woods here, some of the cabins. And I haven't been in the cabins in, a, in ages, but I'm thinking about getting one this year because I've heard they're really, really nice inside. One of the other nice things about Fort Wilderness is you have really easy access to the Magic Kingdom, Grand Floridian, Polynesian, all the different hotels off of Bay Lake. Back towards the back, they also have fishing excursions, which is something I like to do. I kind of take my dad out every year to do the fishing excursions. You're almost guaranteed to catch bass every time you go out, so that's something I would highly re recommend as well. But there's uh, just so much to do here, and you have easy access to all of the parks, not only through the existing bus transportation, but you can take boats over to the, to the Magic Kingdom really easily from here. These are examples of some of the campsites. They start sometimes in the $50 range per night and you can grill out. They've got grills a lot of them have as you can see. You can plug in if you've got an RV but they're great. You can't beat the price. You can even bring a car out here and camp with just a small tent if you wanted to. Whoa. So seeing Chippendale reminds me of one of the other things that we like to do out here and that is they have a Chippendale campfire movie night and you can come out here and you can roast s'mores while you're watching a movie. That's another really nice thing they, they have here on property. Sorry, I've got a uh, leaf blower behind me, but here's an example of one of the basic campsites. You can see it's just a big piece of concrete. And if you do have an RV, you can connect in here. There's some power sources behind that stump looking thing right there. Picnic bench, grill. I'm gonna come over here and you can see some of the areas where you plug in. I don't know anything about RVs, but I know if you get in that box, you can also plug in your RV. But you know, not bad. Plus you have access to all, all the property. 
Okay, normally I would go down this sidewalk. It'd be faster for me to get over to the settlement area towards the back. But I'm actually gonna come over here because there's a little retail store and small grocery store that I'm gonna show you. Okay, I seriously cannot escape this leaf guy. I think he's chasing me. But this is the Meadow Trading Post. Nice little grocery slash retail area here on property. So everything is for wilderness themed, as you can see, or wilderness themed. They have a little bit of retail. Some of the things you'll find at the normal stores. I got squeaky shoes. It's wet outside. But you can see lots of little Fort Wilderness themed dolls. Let's see this, Mickey. How much are you? $19.99. hat. I've been trying to find this hat everywhere, but I can't find one to fit my big head. So Disney merchandise, if you're listening, please look out for planetary head people like me. I got all kinds of Disney Crocs here, which are actually not a bad idea because there's pools here and lots of pine needles and all that stuff. And you can get your regular shoes dirty pretty quickly, especially on a day like today. Oh, checkers. And on this side, you've got more grocery type items, things you can take back to your campsites or your cabins. As well as something you're not gonna find at any of the other Disney resorts, things that are specific for the campsites here, tablecloths, and the ever popular RV sewer hose. Probably the biggest reason why I'll never take an RV out here. Oh, I still have some Christmas ornaments out here too. When you come out of the Meadow Trading Post in the back, there's a whole area where you can rent canoes. You can see some, some people fishing over here out of this little pond. I don't know, there might be some bass in there. And then on the other side is where you've got your bike and barn recreation rentals. And there is plenty and plenty of space to bike all around here. It's a really nice property to walk around, jog around. Definitely to bike around. See the pool over here as I cross the bridge? Over there's the bike rental and that's the meadow training post where we just came from. Okay, I didn't know this, but you can actually rent fishing gear here at the bike barn, which is pretty cool. Cause there's lots of little areas where you can throw your bait in the water and maybe catch something like a little bass or who knows. But like I said earlier, they do, they do have fishing excursions out at Bay Lake off the back of Fort Wilderness that I would highly recommend. It's a lot of fun. Got shuffleboard courts over here. Actually, I'm gonna take a little detour. I'm gonna take you over to where the campfire sing-along takes place so you can see what it looks like, even though it happens at night. Oh, we got some segways, all-terrain segways it looks like. All right, Chippendale's campfire sing-along presented by Pop Secret. So you can park your golf carts over here. Squirrel. Okay, so this is where the campfire sing-along takes place. You can see right behind that cart, the, he's fixing the s'mores fire pit. That's where you would roast s'mores. Lots of bleacher seating. That's where they obviously do the movie up there. And then Chip and Dale, and sometimes some of the other characters come out to greet guests. And then you can buy refreshments and foods over here. It's really good. I'll definitely bring you back at some point. Okay, this is new since the last time I was out here. Food truck for the campfire sing-along. Let's see, you got smoked pork belly and Tillamook cheeseburger, beef brisket sandwich. Last time I was here, I, I know they had popcorn and of course all the s'mores supplies at the other retail area that I took you to earlier, but this is nice. They've even got wine and beers, some kids menu items. And then down here, you can see the s'mores kit, cotton candy. Lots of good stuff to get your kids hopped up on sugar. And I don't know, they've got all these states marked. I don't know if this is places this food truck has been. If anybody knows, let me know in the comment section. Pretty neat though, good idea. Okay, so again, here's Chippendale's campfire sing-along area. And then that's the bridge we walked across over there. Back behind those trees is where the pools, one of the pools is located. 
and that's where the meadows training post is and now i'm going to try to find my way back out onto the main trail to get back heading back towards the settlement oh cardinals kind of rare to see cardinals here they're only out like for a short period of time here in florida my favorite bird lots of them too one of the little creeks that runs right through the middle of fort wilderness oh, cardinal another nice thing about fort wilderness is it's actually one of the only pet friendly properties on disney property and you'll see lots of dogs out here. They have, of course, rules pertaining to how the dogs are to be handled while they're here, but it's very, very, very pet-friendly resort property. I think the settlement is right up through here, so we're almost there. Okay, we're almost here. This heavy breathing that you're hearing is not for effect. This is for real people. I need to get in shape, and you're helping me do it. Oh, here we go. Some remnants from the holidays. Hello, kitty. Okay, so out in that direction, we're gonna head over to Tricircle D Ranch. If we went straight, that would head towards the lake where you'll take the boat transportation to the Magic Kingdom and other Magic Kingdom resorts. And also the Hoop To Do Review is located over there and we'll be back there tonight. So let's go over to the ranch. Those buses that we saw earlier that were leaving from the bus depot at the front of Fort Wilderness drop off over here and guests that are coming back to the Pioneer Hall or to the settlement to do hoop to doo review or visit the restaurants back here, if they don't want to do the walk that I did, which again, I think it's about a mile, they can take this bus transportation. Not many people walk. I need the steps though. Okay, so just to orient you to where we are, we're at the settlement. Tri-Circle D Ranch and Farm is over here. Pioneer Hall, where Hoop to Do Review takes place and where we'll be tonight is over there. But I'm gonna walk you over to Tricircle D Farm. We're over at Tricircle D Farm. Not very busy here, as you can see. It's never busy over here, actually, and it's such a great area, especially if you've got kids that like animals. It's an easy place to bring them to see horses. So these little white ponies that you see, these little white horses, are actually the same ones that they use for Cinderella's coach over at the wedding pavilion at the Grand Floridian when they bring bride, the bride to the wedding pavilion. They use these ponies, but they're beautiful and they have really sweet dispositions. Sometimes they peek their heads out and you can pet them, but they're really tame and nice. And then over here is where you'll find the blacksmith. And this is where they actually change the horse's shoes. You can see them working on some of the bigger horses, which is where we're gonna go visit in a second, but it's really impressive. It's kind of like stepping back in time. They do all the work right here. Now we're gonna head back to see the big boys. Hi, Skylar. This is my daughter's favorite horse whenever we come out here because they have the same name, spelled a little differently. So a lot of the horses in these stables are either Clydesdales or Percherons and they are huge horses and they're beautiful and they have such great temperaments. A lot of them are used for the different shows. Oh, who's this little guy? Is this Cloud? Cloud and Huckleberry. Mule and Shetland. Oh, smallest ones by far. But a lot of these, like Grady, this Percheron, they're beautiful. And a little camera shy. This is Chief, another Percheron. They're eating right now. Hopefully one of them will peek their heads over. So this, here, let's read a little bit about it. This was built in 1970, opened in 1971, same year that the Magic Kingdom opened. 80 to 90 horses at any one time are managed here at Tricircle D Ranch. These horses provide a unique opportunity to ride in a horse-drawn streetcar, arrive at your wedding in Cinderella's carriage, delight in a child's first pony ride, or enjoy a quiet wagon, carriage, or sleigh ride. And that's what all of these horses are used for. This is, I'm trying to remember the story about this. Oh, you can hear the calliope play. Maybe. Maybe not. Oh, this is Paul. Wow. Okay, that's impressive. And this little room right off of the main stables tells the story, a lot of the history of the horses here at Disney. Lots of pictures, some of the competitions they've been in, how they've been utilized at the theme parks for some of the different shows in the Magic Kingdom. The Headless Horseman, Not at Mickey's Not So Scary, Halloween Party, all the different parades. There's the white ponies we saw earlier for Cinderella's carriage. Out of Japan at Epcot. 
Okay, so that's where they keep the Percherons and Clydesdales. Now we're going to head over to where some of the smaller ponies are kept. One of the other things they do here for the pony rides is, I know they used to, I'm not sure if they still do. If anybody knows, let me know. But I know on kids' birthdays, they used to have free pony rides out here. Otherwise, I think it's $5 for a pony ride. Okay, I just came from the stables where they keep the Percherons and the Clydesdales. And if you come over here, if you see that trail, that sidewalk that kind of heads back over there, if you stay on that sidewalk, it'll take you all the way over to the Wilderness Lodge. So again, if you want a nice walk, if you want to go over there to the Wilderness Lodge for lunch or something, it's probably, if I were to guess, maybe uh, three quarters of a mile to a mile. Maybe not even that, maybe half a mile to three quarters of a mile, but it's a really nice walk through the woods over to get to the Wilderness Lodge. I'm amazed at how quiet it is. I guess it's right after the time when school has gotten back in and a lot of the tourists have gone back home. So to me, the period between now and really spring break is a great time to be out here at Fort Wilderness. Cause you can see, I feel like I'm the only person out here. Plus it's not a really nice day, but, but still, I mean, nobody here. Walking from the pavilion area, we come out to Clementine's Beach. And this is another really nice area that's not utilized very much. For photography purposes, if you ever wanna do a family photo session, this is a really good spot to do a session because you've got this beach, you've got the nice trees in the background, the lake, you've got Bay Lake over here. And then this is where the boats launch from. This is also where the fishing excursion takes off from out there. Again, I really highly recommend the fishing excursions for something fun to do that's a little bit off the beaten path. But they always do a great job of keeping up this beach and making it look nice. And then the boats will come over here, pick up guests, take them back over to the Magic Kingdom, which is over these trees here. You can see a little bit of the top of the contemporary. One of the things that I really try to help with in these videos is finding great photo locations at some of these resorts that might be off the beaten path where you can do family photos or kids photos. These playgrounds are really good areas for getting nice candids of your kids. This is meant to be kind of a, an area to kill time before you go eat. And then of course the beach is also another great area for some some photos you have a couple of eating options here you've got crockett's tavern which actually is not only they have a little bar but you can also get food here and then trails end is the restaurant portion of it and that's where we tend to eat a lot and this is going to look completely different tonight when we come back but pioneer hall right here is where hoop to do review takes place and it'll be interesting to compare what it looks like now to what it looks like tonight because it's going to look completely different and then sometimes they have private carriage rides, which actually leave from right here. For the private carriage rides, looks like they have them going regularly between 5, 30, and 10. And I know they, they usually have two or three horses at least out here pulling the carriages. $55 per ride. And I think the ride, if it's like the sleigh rides, probably takes about 20 minutes or so. And I think you could put about four people, four, maybe, maybe six, but I think four people on the carriages. Trading Post is another retail and grocery area here. I think I'm gonna get something to eat at Trails End maybe, or Crockett's Tavern. Okay, at Trails End, you've got a couple of options. You've got a sit-down meal, which looks like it's $22 for guests 10 and over. Three to nine is $12, but it's more like a buffet style. And one of the really nice greeters just told me that there's a little quick service place up here that has sandwiches, wraps, pizzas, things like that, but it's all to go. So I'm gonna give that a shot. Okay, here's the quick service options. Got pizzas, subs, wraps, chicken nuggets, kids meals, lots of little snacks. Okay, I just ate at the little quick service restaurant at Trails End and I gotta say, I wasn't really impressed as an Italian sub. So I guess Italian subs are kind of hit and miss all the time, depending on the quality of meat you get in it. But it was $9.99 for the sub and then $3 for the water. So it was okay. I bet a turkey wrap or a pizzas probably would have been a little bit better. Now we're heading back to the front. So another long walk ahead. I barely missed it, but just a few minutes ago, all the little ponies were running wild. This one was running around, came around the turn and took a fall. So it looks like he's getting a bath soon. Mm, nope. I'm walking back towards the front now and one of the things I thought of, and maybe you all can help me out with this, is a couple of years ago, I saw an electric passenger bus coming through here. And you know, they have the passenger buses, the 55 passenger or so passenger, passenger buses that go back and forth between the front of Fort Wilderness and the back. And I saw an electric one a couple of years ago, but I haven't seen it since. So does anybody know what happened to those? I'd be curious to know because it's pretty cool. 
be nice if they could all go electric. I see some of the cabins over here. Fort Wilderness cabins. I'm gonna walk over and see if I can get a closer look. And here are the cabins. One street with cabins on either side. Pretty nice from the outside, but I know the outside doesn't do them justice. They look really rustic from the outside, but from what I hear, the inside's really nice and a little bit more what you'd expect from the moderate resort rooms here on property. So I'm just about back to the main parking lot. And this is gonna conclude part one of two of our visit to Disney's Fort Wilderness. Next time you see us, hopefully we'll be cleaned up and ready for Hoop to Do review. See you then. And we're back, same spot as before. The bus has just dropped me and I have a guest. My beautiful other half, Pamela's here. So the bus just dropped us off, same place as earlier. And now we're gonna head up to Pioneer Hall to get in line. Shouldn't be too busy today because like we saw earlier, there were definitely not a lot of people here at Fort Wilderness. So we'll find out. We're here at Pioneer Hall and we're waiting for the doors to open for our 8.30 show. Ne definitely not as crowded as I was expecting, but again, it kind of works with what we saw today. Not a lot of people out here, so speaks to the time of year. Early January, mid-January is a great time to come out to the parks. Usually there's decent weather. And sometimes I've seen this line where it's been backed up all the way, maybe, gosh, 50, 100 people deep, if not more, waiting in line to get to those doors. So we'll see, it might get worse, but not bad right now. Okay, this is more of what I expected. And here's the line. Yes, sir. Oh, my. Going in. Right by the stage. Starting out, we got a salad, amazing cornbread. The salad's really good. Isn't the salad good? Yeah, musicians, if you please. Fried chicken, ribs, and they bring you corn and baked beans, and of course a salad, cornbread, and it's all you can eat so far. Thumbs up on all the food. Uh -huh. Number one has been selected on the basis of her talent. Her talent, number two on the basis of her beauty. can-can celebrity uh, we had a really good time I think for what you for what you pay you have constant yeah. entertainment the food was really good it's all you can eat ribs fried chicken the ribs were good I probably would still be there eating if they had a little bit less sauce we talked about that I think it was just a little heavy on the sauce but the ribs were very good 
corn. Salad was great. Salad was really good. Mac oh, and cheese. Cornbread. The cornbread was amazing. <laughs> yeah, probably the best cornbread I've ever had. I'm not a ever huge had. cornbread person at all, and that I cannot stop eating. Yeah, which the is cornbread was great. excellent. <laughs> Uh, the food was was just good all around, and they yeah. keep it coming. They do not stop. And then the strawberry shortcake at the end was also very, very good. Man, so, that was like big enough to be a cake. Like it's just this big. Yeah, I huge. mean it was amazing. But the entertainment was constant. They performed the entire. It's about a two-hour show actually, from start to finish. Yeah. And last time I went to that show, I think. Gosh, it had to be when I was about five or six, and I can actually remember some of the songs from way back then. So that speaks to the popularity of the show, that it's remained constant throughout all these years and decades. And a lot of the staff that works there, a lot of the servers have been there as well for decades. And a lot of the guests who are coming to Fort Wilderness go to that show year after year, decade after decade, and they get to know the staff and the servers. Mm -hmm and I know it's probably the most popular show on Disney property and I can see why. It speaks value, you know, how much they love that show. It's probably one of the longest running show if I'm not you know, mistaken. It's hokey, it's funny, it's a lot of jabs and punchline, but I love their characters and their interaction and they get, you know, involved the audience and lucky me today I got picked to be a Kang Kang dancer. Ah. But um, it was fun. It was fun to be a part of this show, and they were really, really great, actually. They're very, very good people, good show, all around good family, friendly, date night, anniversary, any occasion, perfect, perfect time. Yeah, so we would definitely go back, I'd say. Oh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed the, the tour of Fort Wilderness today and the evening at Hoop to Do Review. And if you like this video, please give us a huge thumbs up as it helps us a great deal. And subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And if there's anything special you want to see from around the Disney World property, feel free to put it in the comments below. Or if you have any questions or any comments about uh, this video or anything you'd like to see, let us know. And also hit the notification button to be notified of future videos. Thanks so much for watching and, and we'll see, see you real soon. soon.